Ah, uh, you see them all swimming over? I bet you they think I got some food for them. Sorry, you guys. I can't feed the army today. You can come over and get your pictures, though. Good morning everybody, Random Andrew here, coming to you from beautiful Port Stanley in the lower section of Ontario, Canada. Not much this year have you seen this beach, so empty. I mean, other than the COVID times, as soon as people were told you can go back to the beach, that thing's been packed, but today it looks pretty empty. So I'm down here in Port Stanley today, nice and early. Fishing boats coming in. So I guess it's not too, too early. I figured we'd do some walk. We'll do a tour. We'll walk out to Lighthouse here. See how everything's looking. I know a fair few of my viewers can't quite make it here to Port Stanley, but you grew up in the area, so you might, might appreciate a look. You wanna see how things look different now? This is going out to the pier. There's that aforementioned fishing boat. And this whole nice peninsula now, all grassed. Great big break wall up here. And Lake Erie. Mackie's on the beach. Well, they're known for their Mackie's sauce and Mackie's aid. But the last time I had it, it wasn't as special as I remember it being. The Port Stanley Pier, this has changed a lot since even I was a kid. I mean, this whole beach area has changed a lot over the years. I'm trying to get you guys a decent shot. It's an old aerial photo from back in the heyday. With the Stork Club on the beach, I got bees just swarming around me. If you type old Port Stanley, Ontario, you'll see. There used to be so much more on that beach. That beach. So that Stork Club, that big old building in the picture used to sit right around here. And they say if you go out there, you can still find pieces of the dance floor way under the sand. I don't know if that's true or not, but hey. All right, we're gonna do the long walk out. I'll save you guys the trip. And we're gonna check out the lighthouse. And there you go. And you call that a lighthouse even. It's more like a large beacon. I remember when we were kids, you'd be able to go all the way around on the platform that sits down there. You can't even see it on this side. Kids would swim out here. Kids would drown out there, unfortunately. Yeah, you can see there's a ledge that goes all the way around. You just hop down and you go out. That's that. Not recommended though. So what a view it is. Even from here, I can see windmills way, way off in the distance. I'll give you guys a nice zoom of the shoreline here. It's quite the sight. I don't know, maybe you're watching from somewhere that doesn't have a lake, quite like one of our great lakes. We'll follow that bird. Got a nice break wall along here. And then we're gets right about little beach is around there. We'll be over that direction later. And then my favorite house on the hill should be about center screen in there. I've got a glare on the camera screen, so it's hard to tell. And then getting into the harbor. There's your harbor right there. That's kettle turns into Kettle Creek. Kettle Creek dumps into the lake. And then, again, with the main beach and those condos. As a matter of fact, quick story time for you guys. Story time. 
these condos up here, uh, just to the left of where they start, so like to the, that way, used to be what's called a vernicular or a, a lift. And there would be two cars, cable pulled cars that would go up and down the hill, bringing people from that nice bluff up top down to the main beach below. And that was like during the heyday. Mm -hmm. They've been gone for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to track the location and figure out exactly where they were. And I got kicked off the property up there because I'm not somebody from that little area. And the guy was quite offended that I was there trying to retrace history. Unfortunately, some people you just can't reason with. Okay, so I'm gonna walk all the way back in. I'll check some stuff out right on the main beach area and then we'll head on slowly over to Little Beach. Port Stanley, Ontario on a beautiful morning. A little bit of wind. It's not bad at all. Doesn't that look like a good bit of fun right there? So I'm also wondering if it might actually be worth a little bit of a walk down past Mackey's and down the main street just a little bit. I'm guessing that'd be one of the main streets. The way I see Port Stanley, it's got a few main streets. You know, this one over here runs right along with the beach. Used to be a boardwalk down there years and years ago. Then you got the little beach main street, which we'll see soon. Oh, I just found something else pretty cool. Look at that, it's a stormtrooper. Pretty awesome. Pretty cool. Alrighty. Now well, we're back about up to getting towards the parking area. I have to go find a washroom and then we'll just continue on from there. One more quick look at this area here. These ducks, you walk up to this area, they all come swimming over. They're so used to being fed. Good morning. Side note, very friendly, very friendly area. You say good morning, just about anybody, they say good morning back. That's just how we roll in Canada. So after a rather lengthy excursion to go and find a bathroom, I did actually, I'll show you where that was in a minute. I'll give you guys a much closer view of Mackey's on the beach. Beautiful place, been here forever. And the beach is just empty, a few people out enjoying the sun, enjoying the day. We're gonna go check out these two folks right here. So what are these two guys all about? Those these sticks they've got. It's like hiking sticks I'd say. And then I see an Elgin hiking trail. 900 kilometers to Tobamori. I'll take the highway, thank you. <laughs> but wow, there you go. You have to look that up if it interests you. It's pretty neat, eh? They each got little backpacks on. Representing the hiking trail. So imagine that being that it goes to Tobamori, probably links up to the Great Canadian hiking trail. And I'm still getting buzzed by bees, so we gotta keep moving. Back to the beach safely. COVID beach safety, you've heard enough of that stuff. You don't need to hear it here. These tables are for Mackey's customers only, and rightly so. We pay to get some good fries, some Mackey's sauce, and some Mackey's aid. You're gonna wanna have good seating, or at least seating. It's the old Mackey's sign established 1911. Think about that. Pretty groovy. All right, so on my adventure to go and find bathrooms, and yes, I'm still getting buzzed by bees. I don't know if you guys can hear that. If the camera microphone picks it up. But they have no fear. They will come and take your stuff. In other words, they'll come and sting you. But this is all so really built up now. I've never really taken the time to walk the beach. So we're gonna do that together today. One more look back here at the pier. The back side of Mackey's. They've also got a foot shower. That's gotta be a throwback to older days. You can see everybody being, oh, don't use that. You'll get foot fungus and all that stuff. 
Signs, signs, everywhere are signs. Warning you, this is actually the more important one to read here. Rip currents, take and suck you out. Take you out in the ocean. Well, the lake in our case. Rip tides, rip currents. So yeah, they've got what feels almost like a boardwalk. It's just a sidewalk. And I kind of like it. There's this thing here about the Great Lakes coastal dunes. I'll leave that for you guys to read if you ever make it down here. Absolutely beautiful day for doing this too. Not too hot, not too cold. There's a bit of wind as you guys can tell. But that's not too bad. Some playground equipment. And in case you yourself are ever down here in port and find yourself in the situation I was in about 10 minutes ago, bathrooms are right on the other side of this dune and they're free. So if you gotta go, you gotta go. There's that blue flag. I'm proud to fly the blue flag. And I'm pretty sure it just talks about beach cleanliness and hygiene, keeping it a nice beach. You get that flag when you're a renowned nice beach. And we're gonna come back around the other side of this, take a look at those in a minute. I don't know if you ever seen on Facebook, they talk about Wheelchair accessibility at the beach. This is it. And let me tell you right now, you could 3D print something better. It would take a whole farm of 3D printers to do it in a short amount of time too. But you could actually 3D print these things. Yes, I'm learning a lot about the 3D printing real quick, which brings me around to the next subject. And there's the wind, just as I wanted to say my bit. I'll, I'll tell you after, just stay tuned. I got something to say about that. So I imagine right around here somewhere, trying to shield you guys from the wind a little bit, right around here somewhere, would have most likely been the Stork Club. Somewhere out here could be possible dance floor bits, way under the sand, probably like six feet or deeper down. All right, let's have a look. This is, right here, this is the backside of GT's Bar and Grill. And they're, they're full rip. They're giving her. And yeah, basketball. And you don't have to play it on the grass either. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to see a pass vlog to get that. So here are these free washrooms I speak of. Free to the public. So if you gotta go, you got a spot. And believe me, that was it was life saving. Yeah, so here's GT's itself. It's been around a long time. We'll wander around the front and we'll have a good look at the front side of GTs. I recognize that big old Dodge sitting there though. And there's a look at the front side of GTs. I don't remember this not being here. I mean, it's always been here. And then just to kind of show you, Port Stanley staying up with the times. They actually got an EV charging station right here a giant tiger, or a giant tiger. GT's on the beach. I don't know, I'm just gonna stick to a well-turned internal combustion engine because electric vehicles, yes, they're handy, they're good for the environment. Those lithium batteries though, I tell you, they're real hard to get rid of. And mining, and mining them is a real pain in the butt too. You don't even wanna go there. Future isn't electric vehicles, it's fine-tuned internal combustion. So we got pay parking. Yes, I do believe it's all pay parking here on the beach now. So if you want to be able to park conveniently, make sure you bring those dollars and tokens and coins to pay for your parking. A colorful set of bathrooms too, eh? It's better than just some drab gray. And believe me, there's ample amount of pay parking. As well, there's also bikes you can rent and ride around port for the day. That is pretty cool. So there's a pavilion here now as well. And we've also got some, like I mentioned, some equipment. And then along this nice, not a boardwalk, more of a concrete walk, but it's still a walk. And we're coming up on the back side of Mackey's. I have to forgive me, I don't know this place. I've never been there. Don't even think I've ever heard of the name. And then we got Casmania over here, and I've never known what it is. They'd make a cool little beach surf shop kind of deal. All right, 
We're gonna go back over to the mini. And then we're gonna head to the other side of port. Gotta love me a nice clean vet. Even if it does have a Mazda giving it some kind of exam from the back. Look at the size of those calipers. Like that's huge, or is that just a cover? That is just a cover. Oh, that's so sneaky. That's sneaky. Okay, like I said, it's a nice day. A lot of people out riding. Doing tours, apparently, wow. It's got an actual whole map going. Hey, right. anybody see a Mini Cooper around here? Ooh, nice. Ah, there we go. Little Beach. This was the beach that we always came to as a kid. We went to Main Beach as well, but this was our favorite beach. Now mind you, it's been years since that point in time. And a lot has changed. I've seen it since then, but I know a lot of you haven't. So this berm, this peninsula that I'm standing on, there's the parking for Little Beach behind me right here. This is all changed. You used to be able to drive around it if you had like a four by four or something. There's a great big wetland area in the middle. Have a look at it now. Huge goose habitat. And like this, this big open field. I wonder if they let anybody camp here. I'll have to check the thing and see if it says no camping or not. And we don't want to get close to this many wild flying hissing cobras. Canadian geese in other words but it looks like they've got a little water inlet and everything here they got a whole habitat section now that's pretty cool I don't know if it's legal but you can apparently have fires here that's what it kind of looks like it's made for all right so I wanted to just do a quick shot of little beach we're gonna park closer over this way and then I gotta show you guys something really awesome really really like to me, it's probably the best looking street in all of Port Stanley. So, we're going to relocate the Mini, like I said. And then we're going to go have a look at the most beautiful street in Port Stanley, Ontario. And on another side note, for years, you see where those porta potties are? For years, there used to be those two vernacular cars. In other words, two cable pulled uh, lifts. I can't remember the actual name that they referred to as. But anyways, they sat right here on display for a couple of decades. And I always thought because it's cleared here that this is where they went up and down. But what would they be going up and down to? Just sell one house? No, it was, it was over here. But you could see them here. So if you remember seeing them here when you were a kid, that would be why. And now you can see them at the Elgin County Railway Museum. They still exist. And that's in St. Thomas. Okay, let's move this car. So not having traveled too far, we just come from over there. And there's uh, kind of out to where the pier is. You can see the pier over here. It's going to give you a little orientation as the channel leads to Kettle Creek. And this whole access to Little Beach is done different. There's like a faux roundabout, like it's still a roundabout. And then it goes off and over to Little Beach. Oh, here are some more of these Ride Elgin, that's what they're called, Ride Elgin, rentable bikes. Scan, code to unlock, ride safely, park correctly, and lock it up. So I'm going to have to look into that, maybe one of these times we'll come down, we'll rent us a bike, and we'll go for a bike tour of Port Stanley. Hey, if that's your only way to get around, get her done. No, he's actually mowing. So there's a lot of cool little places along this street. The Art Emporium, a little pizza shop. And have a look at this, the Little Beach Shop. 
It's like an antiques, souvenirs kind of place. Perhaps on another video we can come down, do a walk around in there, and see what they have to offer. But this place right here has always, always been my favorite place that's not on a hill in Port Stanley. Look at that. The masthead of a ship. Now what that's called? The, the woman on the very front. But yeah, it's just a cool old little place. Very stylish architecture. I mean, very unique looking. And it has this little smokehouse type thing out front. It's made out of concrete brick. Cinder block. Just all the properties, like all the houses along here, all the little shops. Very quaint, very beautiful. And well, if you know me, you know I just can't walk past that. You can see flames in the front. Oh, this looks great. That is one beautiful truck right there. You don't want to talk classics. I'd love to hear it though. But she's got something nice in there. Okay, anyways, on with the tour of the streets. Golem Fisheries. Portside Art Institute. So that's two art places so far. And we'll get a better look at that from across the road on the way back. And then there's places like Inn on the Harbor. You can rent a room here, I'm pretty sure. That's why it's called an inn. And you know, as the channel grows, maybe if my channel ever starts making any kind of monies, we can put that into going and finding quaint little places along lakesides like this. Stay in them overnight, see what it's like, see what the towns are like. Because all these little lakeside towns are all quaint like this, look at that. It's got a little wench and pulley up there, and little doors, hmm. Very much a lot of beautiful architecture, a lot of lovely buildings down here, a lot to see. So if you're out and about Port Stanley and you're looking for somewhere, something to do, even if just for the exercise, I really do recommend Port Stanley as a place to come check out. Studio style. Well, the building sure got style. I've never been in there. It looks pretty nice. And then we're approaching the main corners of Port Stanley. We've got the Kettle Creek Inn. Oh, How's it going? Yeah, it and I have a feeling we'll probably be back down here again at some point to check even more things out. So if there's something you've seen that you would like to see more of from here in Port Stanley, drop a comment, comment section down below. And next time I'm down here, I'll be sure to get to see it. Ice cream shops, you name it, there's restaurants. And there is a lot more, that's the fire hall. There's a lot more to Port Stanley than what I've shown here today. I just got a message. Uh, the whole reason for me being here today is done what they were doing, so it's time for us to be going. But I thought a nice quick little walk around historic Port Stanley, beautiful Port Stanley. Come check it out if you're in the area. Pretty sure you won't regret it. So I just noticed something that I did not know, did not ever see before. This is the Edel, or the, it says the Telegraph House, 1875. Now, you know from our local cemetery research and all that, 1875 goes back a good ways as far as Ontario goes. But this telegraph house, I've never actually noticed it said this here before. Yeah, so save some time here. I just read through it real quick. This is the guy who built this manual pane. Uh, he built it on the foundation of John Bostwick's original home, Bostwick being then the settlers. If you watch my Port Stanley Cemetery tour, you will see that on there. But uh, after being restored, they called it the Telegraph House and they say it's appropriate. And this is a bed and breakfast, by the way. Uh, this was um, the Telegraph agent for Port Stanley as early as 1865. So there you go. 
And it says right here, played a vital role in connecting Little Village, this Little Village, to the rest of Canada's West. That is so cool. So yeah, another hidden mystery moment in the random vlog. Another bee, too. So just keep watching. You never know what we're going to see. Another quick look at the inn on the harbor. I don't want to leave Craig waiting too long. Yes, that's, that's who we're done. Craig needed some help getting down here for work today. And I thought, what a great chance to come down and film some awesome stuff for my excellent subscribers. Pretty cool. And I mean, it's very scenic, very scenic. Get us another look at this beautiful building here. And this little cinder block shack. What does it say? Heritage Landmark, 1900. There you go. Okay, well, I guess before I close out this vlog, I shall say a few quick words. Oh, wait till we get it past here. Have a look at some of the things over front. This is the kind of shop my mom could get lost in. Hey, maybe we should bring you down here sometime, mom. I know you'll be watching. Ooh. Okay, can't get distracted, Craig's waiting. So yes, one last thing before we close out the vlog. If you stuck around, you're lucky enough to get to hear this right here, right now. You guys know I've been in the 3D printing. Without going all ADHD on you guys, I will say I have come up with something awesome for my subscribers. Okay, through the amazing art of 3D printing, I have been able to come up with an opportunity to provide for you guys a chance to get something that I've created and a chance to help the channel. Through helping fund the channel, we can do more trips, we can go see more cool stuff, produce more videos, maybe even upgrade the equipment. So the deal is, I have a Patreon account which will be active within a week or so of the posting of this video. If you are a patron of a certain level of abo and above, you'll get a monthly reward. You'll get something I've created mailed to you has to do with, well, we haven't covered what it has to do with yet. But when the things are created, and I have some created, I will show you, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's so hard to explain right now. I've got to go get Craig. There'll be a video coming up in the future that fully explains it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Click like, hit that thumbs up, share the video, and uh, make sure you're subscribed. We'll see you again here soon. This vlog's over.